Hey y'all, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here. This is the Electricians in Action. Let's go ahead and get to it. So we're continuing in our series about driving ground rods at detached buildings and outbuildings or sheds or whatever you want to call it. Yesterday we learned when, you, when you're not required to do it and today we're going to learn when to drive a ground rod. Now I say that term very loosely because what we're actually talking about here is when you're required to establish a grounding electrode system. But often at these outbuildings, there's not a footer ground available. So the easiest way to accomplish this is to drive a couple ground rods, isn't it? That's what we normally do. So yesterday we established that for running a single branch circuit or multi-wire branch circuit, no grounding electrode system is required. If you want to go back and watch that video, it's called part one in this video series. Now we're going to pick up where we left off to learn when to drive ground rods or when to establish a grounding electrode system. So we have our structure over here. Everything that we're talking about is assuming that we're feeding this detached building from another structure. And let's talk about what the code requires here. So what we're going to do, and before we even jump into it, I want to lay down one ground rule that applies universally. And this is something that recently caught my eye in the code when I was at a seminar. But you are not allowed to feed any structure or building with more than one branch circuit, multi-wire branch circuit, or one feeder. You're not allowed to run multiple cables to the structure, and you're not allowed to run multiple pipes to the structure. And the reason is, is that, um, even if it's for lighting or for something else, because the reason is, is that somebody could go to the main structure and turn the breaker off and think that they've turned off that detached garage. Well, when they get out there, there's more circuits out there and they don't know it. So you're only allowed to feed it one time. That's an easy way to put it. You're only allowed to supply it with power from one location and in one way. So let's go ahead and talk about this now that we've got that out of the way. So let's look at our structure here. Let's imagine we come out of the house, we pipe over with conduit, and we pipe up over here. Now we're going to talk about when you're required to establish a grounding electrode system. And to be very basic, it's, you know, any time that you're doing more than a single branch circuit or multi-wire branch circuit. That's the easy way to think about it. Anytime you're doing more then a single branch circuit or a single multi-wire branch circuit, you're required to establish a grounding electrode system. But let me tell you when it's easiest to think about doing it. It's when you put a panel at that structure. Anytime you're more doing more than lights and receptacles, okay, with that single branch circuit or that single multi-wire branch circuit, if you're setting a panel there and then you're coming out of it with more branch circuits, that would be leaving the realm of a single branch circuit or a single multi-wire branch circuit. So if you're going to be setting a panel out in that structure, that is also going to be a, a, a large indicator that, hey, we're going to have to establish a grounding electrode system. So how do we establish this grounding electrode system? Well, we can go through any of the traditional ways that are laid out there in 250. Okay, I think it starts in 250.2. That's talking about grounding electrodes themselves. And then you get into establishing the system. And I've got tons of videos on how to establish a grounding electrode system. That's kind of out of the scope for today. But you could do two ground rods. You could do a UFR ground, which is a footing ground, if it was already available there. You also could do plate electrodes and ground rings. Okay, so there's lots of different ways that we could establish this grounding electrode system. But if you are feeding a structure with more than a single branch circuit or a single multi-wire branch circuit, and if or you're setting a panel out there, you're going to be required to establish a grounding electrode system. And you're probably going to likely drive two ground rods and run your cable into your panel, wherever that is there. Okay. And that way, everything's going to be co-compliant. Now, tomorrow is the most important video in this series. Tomorrow, we're going to learn how many wires you have to run from that structure. Do you have to run three wires from the structure and establish a grounding electrode system? Or do we run four wires from that original structure and still establish a grounding electrode system? And then if that's the case, do we separate grounds and neutrals? So tomorrow is the most important video in this series. Highly recommend that you join us. If this content is adding value to you, I ask you if you'd please share, like, subscribe anywhere that you get social media content. If you guys can get the word out there, I just want to see you guys win. And my, my bargain is that these videos are adding value to you and that you will in turn add value to other people. I am the Electrical Code Coach. This is the Electricians in Action. Let's go ahead and get to it.